you're here. Welcome to Rotary. Woo! Hi, welcome to Rotary. It's so good to see you. We'd like to thank our greeters, Quinn Dolan and Amy May. Last week's uh, YouTube video, uh, we had over 175 views on that one. You know, we're going from a Zoom recording to a YouTube recording and hopefully to Facebook. Thank you again, Dwayne Monick. Our Zoom, same day Zoom session that we had, our social, we had over 35 participants. Uh, our yesterday's second chance social was a huge success. Thank you very much, David Links. Our district conference is going to be by way of Zoom this year. Uh, we're going to have a maximum of 500 people to be able to participate. That's on April the 25th, starting at 1230. We have a great lineup of speakers, uh, Evan Burnell, as well as Jeff Cataract. Our music is Linda Kaminsky. Hello, fellow Rotarians. In, a, in order to continue our tradition of music at Rotary, we are bringing you music videos each week that are related to the date of our meeting. So today, April 9th, is the 155th anniversary of the end of the Civil War and it is designated as Appomattox Day. The Civil War ended on April 9, 1865 in the village of Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia, when Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant of the Union Army accepted the surrender of General Robert E. Lee of the Confederacy. The Confederate soldiers were allowed to keep their horses and return to their homes. The officers were allowed to retain their sidearms and swords as well. Thus ended the bloody four-year conflict that had cost more than half a million lives. So today you will hear the Battle Hymn of the Republic. of seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching. can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps his death
invocation is Tim Carlson. Good afternoon, Rotarians. It's great to be with you, even though it might be remote, and even though it's under some very difficult times for our nation and our community. I'm happy to be alive. I'm frankly happy to not be infected at this particular time with the virus. But it's good to know that Rotary is there, giving us advice, giving us wisdom. But most of all, it's good to know that God is there. By whatever name you call God, we are all calling upon him to some extent for guidance. The question sometimes is, are we really good receptors of that particular matter? The great football coach, Vince Lombardi, used to go to daily mass. And he used to say that the messages he got there were often the things that led him to lead men to do extraordinary things. It's a time when we need extraordinary action in our country and frankly, extraordinary action in our businesses and in our daily lives and in the callings of our family. I only hope that we're really listening to God as we do that, that we're really listening to the messages of hope that is out there. Our nation has faced extraordinary challenges in the past. The Spanish flu, which came along about 10 years after Rotary came along, was one of the great challenges of this country's history and its time. The very president of the United States, President Wilson, uh, contracted the flu and yet wasn't one of those who passed away. He obviously went on to lead our country greatly to the armistice of World War I and many post-war victories that this country had. I believe, like I'm sure most of you do, that one, we're gonna come through this. Maybe not all of us will come through with it as healthy as we were before, but we have the great scientific knowledge, we have the great presence of this nation and the strength of ourselves to gather together as we, the people. I only hope that we'll listen to God's message and bring the beneficence to all who are before us, like the four-way test says, is it beneficial to all? Would you please join me in this invocation in this moment? God above, by whatever name we call you, whatever religion we decide to subscribe to, we know that the universal truths of love and grace that you bring to us, the omniscience, the knowledge, the ability to discern, if you will, those things that are best for us need to be called upon and served right now and listen to your word. May your great curing bring to this nation the healing that it needs, not only physically, but mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And may it do so through each and every one of us. And may we subscribe to what Rotary calls us to do, which is to benefit our fellow man. Amen. Your meal dollars have been providing meals for Yakima Catholic Charities, Yakima Neighborhood Health, and Rod's House. Thank you, Kelly Gosling, for your help in leading this. Uh, the restaurants that we were able to use was the Powerhouse Grill, Gasparetti's, and Easy Tiger. Our playground build for the Martin Luther King uh, playground has been scheduled for May the 30th. And that's per Parks and Rec. It's going to start on that Saturday at 8 o'clock and go until 5. So hopefully we'll be able to keep that date, May the 30th. Scholarship dinners. We look forward to being able to reschedule these, hopefully sometime in the early summer. Uh, we're going to need that time to get back together. So I hope that you... Uh, We'll watch for the new change and see if we can be able to get this to be rescheduled. We'll be working with that committee. In 2004, 2005, I had the honor of being president of the Yakima Rotary Club. And that was another centennial for Rotary. It happened on the 23rd of February in 2005 that the 100th birthday of the first Rotary Club was celebrated worldwide. And on that date, uh, Yakima Mayor Paul George and the City Council declared that to be Rotary International's birthday. So I've, I'm now enjoying my second centennial of Rotary. I remember during my first meeting of that year, recalling something I had heard a speaker say at the President-elect's training seminar that I had attended earlier in the year. Um, 
past Rotary International President Cliff Docterman said, there's the Rotary President's Prayer, and the prayer goes like this. Please, God, don't let the club fall apart during my year. And I think we all sort of think that as we go into our year, but I certainly had a great year. It didn't fall apart. We had lots of wonderful speakers, including uh, Helen Thayer, who just spoke to our club recently, uh, past Rotary International President Rick King, uh, the president of Central Washington University, Geraldine McIntyre, and our own uh, Bob Schultz did an absolutely great program on the anniversary of D-Day. During that year, we built two habitat houses, uh, one for a family with a disabled child, and we had to make some special accommodations in that house for that child. We uh, contributed financially to the William O. Douglas statue that was dedicated that year at uh, Davis High School. We built a picnic shelter at uh, Kiwanis Park. And Operation Harvest collected 91,000 pounds of food and $20,000 in cash. Steve Altmaier from our club led a rotoplast trip to Guatemala. And we had an auction that year <clears throat> when we raised $200,000. And something else that was notable that year is that uh, there were two members of, uh, elected to our board, to the board of our club, uh, who went on to uh, become illustrious members, and they were Jennifer Bliesner and Eric Silvers, who both became board members in that particular year. During uh, this year, a group of uh, members of our club and I decided that this location on Yakima Avenue would be an absolutely perfect place to put up a sign that says, Rotary meets Thursday at the convention center because there aren't any signs like that around town. So a committee, including Rod Nipper, uh, started working on the project, uh, but we discovered this piece of property doesn't belong to the city or did not belong to the city. And so uh, there's a long story involved and uh, in how we got this particular project done. But instead of just a where Rotary meets sign, it kind of got out of hand. So first of all, we brought some heavy equipment into that particular site. We added some fill dirt, we brought in some more heavy equipment, bringing in big basalt columns and stones and put them in place. We got uh, involvement from the members of the other two Rotary Clubs to come over and do some digging to help us put in an irrigation system. Rod Nipper carefully measured where we were going to put the plants on the site. And on a Saturday morning, a bunch of Rotarians and their families came in and finished landscaping it. And when it was all over, we had this beautiful Welcome to Yakima sign. As it turns out, we still don't have a where Rotary meets on Thursday. During my year, my, alumna, uh, my uh, alma mater, the University of Illinois, had an absolutely remarkable basketball season. And all year long, the Fighting Illini were highly ranked and many times in first place in the nation. And I was fairly subtle in my mention of that at Rotary Club, maybe five or six times at every meeting. I occasionally managed to wear something orange and celebrated the Fighting Illini. I, I was getting a little tired of hearing about the Cougars and the Huskies all the time. And the Big Ten wasn't getting their time. So I managed to take advantage of the one year that my team actually did well. So I'll wrap up my uh, year as Rotary President by saying, go Illini, go Illini. Welcome everybody to the Springer Home in Terrace Heights. Uh, we're doing our Sergeant at Arms through uh, Zoom today. New thing for me, uh, without any audience to uh, react to anything. It actually doesn't matter to me because nobody ever reacts to my stuff anyway, so I'm pretty normal here. Um, but in light of the circumstances we're in, what I'd like all of our members to do is to establish a fine pot for the sergeant of arms so that when you get fined you put your money in your own pot at home and then when we get back together you can give it all to carolyn because as we learned from bob D. Pietro a number of years ago all the money ends up in carolyn's pot anyway so establish a, a fine pot at home and when you get fined put the money in there and we'll bring it all together when we get back together so today my theme for sergeant of arms is retirement you see, my wife and I just spent our first full winter down in Southern Arizona being snowbirds. And we made some interesting observations while we were there about retirees. 
And I thought I'd share that for the benefit of the, uh, what, three people that are in a club that haven't retired yet. Anyway, um, retirees are a different sort, so I've got some observation I wanted to share with you. First of all, if you retired, you are slower. Everything is slower. You talk slower, you dr drive slower, you walk slower, you do everything slower. And so if you're new to retirement, you better be patient with people. My wife and I first learned this when we went to a Safeway store in Southern Arizona. And of course, everybody there is over 55. And they all had shopping carts. Now, whether they were buying one thing or 40 things, they would all have a shopping cart. Well, you know why? Because they use them as walkers. That balances them. That keeps them upright. So if you can relate to this, why don't you pay a buck? The second thing we noticed um, about retirees is that the primary topic of conversation is always about health. Whether it's your doctor that you're going to or you're sharing colonoscopy stories or what Medicare plan are you on or what drugs you got cheap in Mexico or Canada. Everybody always talks about health. And if you agree with this, why don't you pay a buck? Now, on the positive side, one of the things that we learned was that re when you're retired, you can reconnect with your youth. And here's how I was able to do that. It's called Bonanza and Gunsmoke and The Rifleman and Wagon Train. Yes, all of those Westerns that I grew up with I have time to watch again. So I was able to reconnect with my youth. A couple other things, retirees, they all play bunko. If you play bunko, pay a buck. The busiest time at restaurants in the retirement community, 4.30 in the afternoon, that's when they eat dinner. So be aware of that. You know, if you're retired, you sleep better. You know, you wake up at four or five in the morning and you're not worried about the project you have to do at work or the report you have to write or the client meeting you have to have. You just go back to sleep. So you sleep better in retirement. You know what? Retirees also play more golf. Yeah, I got to play more golf. I have a reputation of playing a lot of golf. Never really did play a lot, but I sure did this past winter. So if you are a golfer, why don't you pay a buck? I also noticed about retirees that they all have a lot of stuff. You know, they, they collect stuff, they can afford stuff, so they buy stuff, but then they don't need it. Um, the biggest section of our local newspaper in our community there was the want ads because people have stuff to sell they don't need. Uh, the one we saw recently was that a guy was selling his electric toothbrush. Would you buy somebody else's toothbrush? Anyway, if you have a lot of extra stuff, why don't you pay a buck? You know, finally, one of the things that we noticed in our retirement community, you know where the busiest place was? the dog park. All retirees have dogs. They have one, two, three dogs, and they drive around in their golf carts with these dogs in them. So if you want to connect with anybody, you go to the dog park. If you have a pet or a dog, why don't you just pay a buck? So remember, put your box into your fine pot, okay? Save them up for when we get back together. And for the time being, then, we are over and out. Stay safe and stay healthy. Our speaker today is Ezra Tashomi, who has spoken to our club before, and we've been involved with him in various past Polio Plus projects. Ezra is an entrepreneur who has earned accolades worldwide for his philanthropic endeavors and efforts, with, efforts within Africa to impact the lives of children. He is a passionate person about global health issues, particularly focusing on the eradication of polio 
and bringing clean water to villages in rural Ethiopia. He has served notably on the board of several organizations as well as a university. Professionally, Ezra has built a successful insurance and financial services business for over 40 years. He is also very involved in his local Ethiopian community where he helped build the first church and establish the community center. As a testament to his contributions to society, Ezra has been awarded with many of the highest honors in his community, including the World Affairs Council World Citizen Award, Seattle University's Alumni Community Service Award, the Rotary Service Above Self Award, Rotary International Service for a Polio Free Award, and being named a Time Magazine Global Health Hero. Today, Ezra will discuss Rotarians growing collaboration to end malaria. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians from the great club of Yakima. My name is Ezra Tishome, past district governor, and I wish I would there in person to talk to you, but uh, here we are, and I'm, I'm also hoping that you and the family are very well. Let me uh, start by speaking about how I got involved uh, in the uh, malaria eradication project, which I'll be talking about shortly. Uh, most of you remember that uh, in the 50s, when polio was feared as much as war, children would be jumping and swimming in the swimming pool one day, and the next day they were, were unable to walk and they're crippled for the rest of their life. And thanks to the bold commitment that Rotarians have made, we promised the children of the world that we will do whatever it takes to eradicate the polio virus by providing financial support so children anywhere could get the vaccine without having to worry about the financial money that they have to pay. At the time we promised the children, there were 125 countries globally that were affected by polio and over a thousand children were crippled each day by the polio virus. And our support and commitment has eliminated polio with the exception of two or three countries today. And the two countries are Afghanistan and Pakistan and Nigeria is about to be declared a polio free country shortly. For over 20 years, I have led a delegation of Rotarians from the US and Canada, including some of you from your club who came with me to do the two drops of polio vaccination. Our success in that endeavor has enabled the country to become, to be declared a polio free country. And thanks to all of you to do that. Now that we're in the verge of eliminating the polio virus, so many people ask me, what would be the next project? What, we, what should we do? Obviously, we chose the cause from the six areas of focus, which is eradicate malaria. Now, let me talk about the Rotarian Malaria Partnership and the topic that I chose is collaborating to eradicate malaria. The Rotarian Malaria Partnership was established when Seattle number four was commemorating their 100 year anniversary in 2009. And it was registered as an independent NGO and uh, Rotarians who are passionate about eradicating malaria were able to join us. Over 70 Rotary clubs across the US and Africa became our partners. Our vision is to eliminate malaria worldwide. Our mission 
is to generate a broad international Rotarians, a Rotarian movement for the global malaria eradication. As you could see, Dr. Tedros, who is the director of WHO, in his view, defeating malaria is absolutely critical to ending poverty, improving the health of millions, and enabling future generations to reach their fullest potential. Now that I've said that, you know, we hear so much about malaria. What is malaria? Well, malaria is a parasite that invades the red blood cells transmitted by mosquitoes. And this happens, this occurs in many tropical and subtropical regions. And this is what it does. An infected mosquito bites a human being and the parasite enters the blood and malaria parasite develops inside the body. Then the infected, when the infected mosquito bite another person, you get malaria. That's how easy how it gets and how it spreads. So you might ask why, why malaria? Why do we focus on malaria? Well, malaria has killed more people than any other disease in history. Globally, the World Health Organization estimates about 250 million cases a year. 250 million cases a year. And they also estimate that today, 435,000 people die from malaria. 90% of these people are, they live in Sub-Saharan Africa. Sadly, about 50% of them are children under five. Well, now that we have pretty much eliminated or about to eliminate polio, and malaria also aligns with the six areas of focus, I think it's the right choice that we're making to eradicate malaria. And you might ask, why now? Well, once we eliminate polio, we're ready to take another health challenge, which I hope would be the elimination of malaria. Polio has been reduced in many areas, the exception of the two countries. So far this year, we have about 36, about 40 cases, 36 in, Afghan, in Pakistan and three in Afghanistan, and nothing in Africa. So hopefully we'll get rid of Pakistan and Afghanistan, Polio will be declared, it's completely gone from the globe and will focus on malaria. Uh, many African governments are also focusing on the eradication of malaria because they, they would save money. It would also families, instead of spending their little money they have on malaria vaccination, they could use it to empower their economic uh, daily life. There is also a broad non-government organization and international to eliminate malaria. It's a multifaceted campaign against the disease, which will show success. And the time is now. And how do we fight? How do we fight uh, Rotarian Malaria Partners? How do we fight to eliminate malaria? Well, here are some of the things that we have done and we continue to do in the future. Number one, we invest in anti-malaria projects alongside the Rotary Clubs in the country. And number two, we bring partners such as Gates Foundation, World Health, and others. Number three is the campaign for malaria eradication with Rotarians and other key stakeholders in the country to include businesses, religious organizations, and governments. We have that kind of power. Uh, our support for national malaria elimination campaign is led by so many clubs that we're working with now. 
in uh, Africa. We're working with uh, the Rotary Malaria Partners of Zambia. The Rotary Malaria Partners of Uganda. We're also in Gambia, Ghana. Soon we were, uh, and we're reaching out to those countries that need our help. Well, why are we fighting to eradicate malaria? It saves lives and it's easy to do. Our partners are the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that gave us $500,000 to be used as a match. And we have PATH, we have Pilgrim in Africa. We also work with the President's Malaria Initiative, World Vision, Alliance for Malaria Prevention and Malaria No More. So we bring in all these powerful organizations to work together with us. And what type of role can we play, Rotarians play? Well, here are some of the things that we have done. Uh, we purchased insecticide treated bed nets and we go to the country to provide and deliver bed nets to the villagers. We purchase effective anti-malaria medication. Uh, we prevent treatment for pregnant women. The main thing also the local health workers to go out and deliver the campaign and uh, make sure people know how to use the bed nets, what to do. Those kind of things are very helpful to eliminate malaria. Uh, we also provide the rapid diagnostic kits so that people would know they have the malaria virus. We have indoors spraying the residential to residential homes. So by doing all those things with the local Rotarians, we're able to eliminate malaria. The uh, Strategy obviously is to create an advocacy that will become a catalyst for in the district, in the uh, zone and Rotary International. Just as we did in the polio campaign, we wanna make sure that the malaria campaign uh, will, uh, will get our advocacy in, in your district. The partnership and collaboration with the global malaria work and create a strong unified infrastructure in the campaign within the country will also help to eliminate malaria. The field projects, we're hoping that uh, we will go to those countries, work with our partner Rotarians and with other partners to reach out and just as we did in the national immunization days for polio, to reach out is something that we could do to help the local Rotarians. And lastly, fundraising. Obviously, to do all this, we need, we need money. We hope that uh, you would be interested in supporting the malaria uh, eradication strategy. And if interested, work with us to, uh, to collaborate and, uh, and raise funds. Here are some of the clubs that are working with us in our district and the rest of the Rotary world. So far, we have raised $2,150,000 for 21 projects. That is about 350,000 beneficiaries. So that's quite a lot and uh, I hope this will continue. The goal again to eliminate malaria is Number one, spraying plus treating the affected people by giving them anti-malarial medication plus providing bed nets would remove the burden so quickly. Number two is public education. Working with community leaders, the local Rotarians who are very effective, providing surveillance with the local Ministry of Health and using the health workers uh, will give us a sustained reduction in the malaria 
erad eradication effort. Uh, some of the work that we have done in Uganda, we have uh, $190,000 global project, and that helped to save about 50,000 people and about 8,000 families in the rural Kenya. In Katawi district in Uganda, we have $300,000 project underway, uh, as many population as it, as it is in Katawi, and uh, that would also help to eliminate malaria. And everywhere we go, there is the, the rotary sign in the uh, projects that were involved in Katawi. And the involvement again is number one, education, uh, work with the village leaders, work with the Rotarian leadership in the country, and education with the health workers and community ownership because uh, the education is going to help the community health workers to make sure they have the materials and the support to promote the education. We have the vector control, which is in the residential spring and bed nets. We also provide some of the medical care. And, and luckily some of the health clinics that are established to eradicate polio are now being used to also eradicate malaria, as well as currently they're being used to also support the COVID-19 uh, uh, COVID-19 cases in those countries. So we do have the, in, within each country, the Rotarian Malaria Partners Uganda, Rotarian Malaria Partners Zambia, partnering with us, and we're hoping to eliminate. In, in Zambia, there is an, an area called the Copper Belt Province, it has about two and a half million people to benefit from our effort. It is a proven approach and it's led by Rotarian Malaria Partners in Zambia. And the local clubs, there are three clubs, one in Federal Way, one in Aspen, Colorado, and the Seattle Rotary Club. We help raise money, help to bring the needed material and help in Zambia. Uh, there is where Zambia is located in the southern part of Africa and hopefully with our support they will be eradicating malaria soon. The secret success for the community health workers is obviously to be involved directly within the local community. So what, what can you do as your club can get involved? How can you get involved? Number one, we were hoping that you will commit financial support for the grants that we're working on. Uh, or you could pick up a country uh, that you work with and partner with us and we'll provide the matching fund from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, secondly, please advocate the malaria elimination within your district and within the zone so that this could be eradicated soon. Uh, initiate anti-malaria projects in a new country. Uh, this is be a great project for the local Rotora clubs to work with the rotor clubs in the, in the country of your choice. And we're also planning a trip in October, hopefully. Uh, part of it would be the uh, polio vaccination and also to help work in the malaria project in Ethiopia. So if any of you are interested in God willing that uh, we're able to, to go to these countries, please join us. And with your help, we'll, we'll be able to eradicate malaria. The 
it looks like the malaria eradication effort, the bar is high, but based on what we have done for the polio eradication, I'm hoping that we can do it. Please join us. And thank you for taking the time to listen to me. And uh, thank you uh, again. I will ho hope to come and visit you at a future date. Uh, but if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much. Thank yes. you very much for your presentation about the malaria. You know, as you know, we are a big club in a small town, but we're doing big things in Yakima as well as around the world. And, you know, we have a big heart, just to let you know that, which I'm sure you know. Uh, having gone on a couple of you trips, do. I really enjoy being able to see things that you can be able to change our lives on. And you're changing millions and millions of people's lives. Are you available to answer some questions from some of our Rotarians? Yes. Uh, your, your club has a major presence. Uh, the hospital that you built in Ethiopia, uh, which you went and visited, is a tremendous help uh, for the country. I mean, that hospital is a much better hospital than any within the, the, er the, the area and that village. And secondly, uh, one of your members, uh, Dr. Tim Tusing, who's lived in Ethiopia, who's done so much work, uh, really the Yakima Club has, has done so much to help the country and thank you. Okay, Ezra, I understand that you are looking for our support in at least two ways, advocacy and grants or donations. And I yes. understand that. Is there anything we can do for hands-on assistance? Good question. Uh, in October, God willing, we're, we're going to Ethiopia for the polio vaccination. And also we're planning to, to go to Zambia as well. So if your club, if anyone is interested, certainly that would be the time to come and uh, be able to see, meet the Rotarians who are working on the projects, come up with any projects that your club could pick up. So this would be the hands-on invitation for you to join us. And uh, if you're also interested in and uh, say you want to take Ethiopia as a, as a club project, we certainly will connect you with the local Rotarians who are working with the Ministry of Health to eradicate uh, malaria. So those would be my suggestion, would be join us on the upcoming trip. Well, I have a follow-up question, if that's okay. I don't know if my facts are correct, but right now I understand that there is no permanent immunization method or medicine for malaria that you can take various, I think one is called Malarone, the other is Mesquite Rx, but they're only good for one year. Uh, is there an improvement that I'm unaware of? Well, one of the uh, organizations that we're working with is uh, PATH, which is right here in Seattle. Uh, between them and the University of Washington and others, there is a tremendous effort to come up with the uh, vaccination, just like we have done for polio. But I think uh, there might be a pause right now with everybody focusing on the COVID-19. But you're absolutely right. There is not much that could be done with the exception of uh, the prevention by providing the bed nets and perhaps the anti-malaria uh, pills. Uh, those are the, the only thing that we could do and, uh, and also educate people because mosquitoes breed on uh, st you know, standing water. So people learn to eliminate those kind of things by, by the education. We could, uh, we could help them uh, not get the disease, but at the same time, uh, so many organizations are focusing on research, and uh, uh, it is my hope soon they will come up with, with medication. But as of now, you're right, there is nothing. 
Ezra, uh, could you reiterate for us again the annual incidence of malaria and the annual death rate for malaria? I mean, it's so much greater than we're anticipating for COVID-19. It's more like the 1918 flu epidemic and how that adversely affected the world. And, and then this happens every year, not just occasionally, it happens every year. Well, you know, historically, uh, malaria has killed more people than any other disease in history. I mean, malaria has killed more people than any other disease in history. According to World Health Organization, 250 million cases every year. 250 million. I know we had, we had malaria in this country, but we got rid of it uh, uh, a long time ago. But uh, the biggest area is Sub-Saharan Africa, and South America, and Asia. In Asia, there are so, so many countries. So when you look at from the 250 million cases, 435,000 people die of malaria every year, 435,000. And polio was crippling 350,000. This is even more than the polio case. And the sad part again is 50% of the, those who die are children under five. So that's, uh, that's an astonishing number in terms of when you look at uh, the, the malaria killing so many. Thank you very much, Ezra, to show me for being able to talk to us in regards to the malaria project. We hope that we'll be able to participate in some way. Remember, Ezra, you know that we are a big club in a small town with a big art, and we're doing big things not only in Yakima, but around the world. Our next week program is going to be Jeff Cataract, and he's a, an RI board director. He's going to be speaking about the uh, Rotary, Yakima Rotary, and the wonderful things that we're doing, as well as his view of the direction of Rotary in the future. So, you know, this is our new normal, and, but we can't wait to be able to get back together to see you all in person. Be safe.